If someone made you a list of all the reasons they didn't like you, would you read it? On today's case, Mrs. Joel says that's exactly what her husband, Mr. Joel, has done. Mr. Joel says that you can't fix a problem unless you identify it, and he has always been extremely observant. Is Mrs. Joel ready to hear this list, or will she press control alt delete on this marriage? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Joel versus Joel. Thank you. Mrs. Joel, you say you're here to save your marriage. You told the court that you believe you and your husband are soulmates, but your husband's anger problems, constant lies, and his very long list of personal grievances against you have you questioning the viability of this union. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Joel, you say there are always two sides to every story and that you and your wife have had problems for years. You say you've done everything in your power to save this marriage, and it's just not working. Now you're ready to call it quits. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let's get to where we are now, where we came from, and where we're actually going. Mrs. Joe, why don't you start us out? Well, I originally came from Southern California and moved to Northern California in 2011. So I had a really hard time finding my tribe. Okay. So when I met him, it was like, at last. And it was great, great energy. We were into the same thing, same music, same art. Um, you know, we, it was my soulmate. And things were, were really, really good for the first six months. We, it was great. What do you think brought you together? Mutual attraction. I'm a graphic artist, he's a web designer. Mm -hmm. So we had interest in music, uh, art, design. And Mrs. Joe, what has split you up? His anger issues. He throws terrible temper tantrums, calls me names. Um, I can't trust him. I've caught him in so many lies. He's it's... not the man you married. No. I wonder if he even really wanted to be married. It feels like it was just a bad joke. Well, let me ask Mr. Joel, how did things go from soulmates to, a, quote, a bad joke? Well, I love this woman, Your Honor. Well, and that's nice to start out by saying. Yes. Uh, we had a chance from day one. Mm -hmm. We had a chance from, uh, from today. However, the, the constant arguing and the accusations of, of that I'm lie and, and the uh, accusations that I'm always angry or angry at her and constantly calling her names is getting a bit old and I'm getting tired. And I don't think I can move on because it's affecting my personal life with my friends and my family and it's affecting my, my uh, career as a business owner. And uh, I just feel like it's time to put it aside and move forward. So we really have to resolve this today or this marriage doesn't stand a chance. Let me turn back to Mrs. Joel. Mrs. Joel, you started out by saying that the defendant, your husband, has anger problems. Right. Why don't you give me some real examples of what you mean? We were playing music one night and, because he's a musician and I like to sing. So we were having, we were having a lot of fun and, and things started to get a little hot and heavy, you know, and, and we're making out and kissing and we decided to, go up to the bedroom. And I realized I had forgotten to take the sheets out of the dryer. And he got really, really angry about that because he had told me he didn't want me running the dryer at night. So he totally lost it over having sheets in the dryer, so much so that he, he picked up his chair and was and throw it. It was, it was common. Wait a minute, you went from we're about to get our party on together right. to I'm mad because there are no sheets on the bed? Okay, yeah. people who are about ready to get their party on don't really care if there's sheets on the bed. Well, it, yeah. So, Mr. Joel, you seem very particular. What in the world was that about? Well, Your Honor, my particularity is not uh, reserved just to that moment. Yes, sir. Uh, we've been dating for a while, and uh, there were times when we retired to the bedroom, and the one thing that's always running is the dryer, and the dryer is 10 feet from the bed. Ah and it's loud and it's hot. And this incident was something that occurred later after repeatedly asking her not to run the dryer at night so that we can go to sleep. Here's my question. Is it that important to you that you have brought it up to your wife numerous times? It's not that important. I think what triggered me that night is that 
I felt like this is one of the things that never changes. And so I had to, I think my anger came out in a form of, uh, I'm just not ready to do this and have, you know, engage in love tonight. I'm just not gonna do that. It's, I just don't feel it anymore. I've reached that moment where I'm just gonna go, go home. So here's my question. Why, when you are angry, and I understand the whole concept of the straw that breaks the camel's back, that there are numerous things that build up and build up, and the same thing gets discussed and discussed, and then one little thing can send you over the edge. And to people outside looking in, they think, why would he get so upset over this one thing? But I don't understand the concept of manifesting your irrit irritation in a way that could um, scare someone. And throwing chairs and name-calling, that can be frightening. Your Honor, you're right. I don't remember a chair being thrown that night. Well, your wife remembers it. Yeah, and usually does. when someone is in the throes of an anger fit... And, and you didn't really throw it. You kind of, like, well, like uh, you, you picked you know, it up and then you realized you didn't have another chair. So you just kind of, like... Uh, you know, all but, I did was lift that chair up a little bit and slam it down because I was angry at but you. But it was BS that, that we were having such a wonderful time and suddenly... Um, I'm worried that this could move in to some form of emotional abuse. Absolutely. I agree, Your Honor. Absolutely. And we need to stop it before it gets to that point. Have we gotten to that area? Yes. Tell me about that. TJ shows up with a list of everything he doesn't like about me. How many things were on the list? Over 30. Th these are things that I made a list of things that affect me. If he has a list of the things he doesn't like, uh -huh. and you're not interested in seeing that list, then that means you're not really interested in making any changes that would accommodate him. Emotional abuse. Verbal abuse. What do you mean when you say verbal abuse? Calling me names. You stupid B. Oh, so insulting and vulgar names. Mm -hmm. Mr. Joel? Yes, Your Honor. Um, you know, from a, a husband and wife perspective, you, I can't imagine that you would ever allow another man to speak to your wife in that way. Your Honor, and I never would. However, at that time when we're changing uh, insults, she is calling me a whole bunch of names as well, and not just one. And so I feel like uh, when the argument reaches that point, we start calling each other names. I disagree. I will exchange names with you after you start it. But, but I... whoever starts it, it doesn't matter. If right. that's the way you speak to each other, then that is a lack of communication. She, she Absolutely. She, you, you about everything, though. Everything, everything I do. I, I say you red, you say blue. Thing. I, I walk you, you left, you say walk left, right. Nothing's good enough for you. It's, it's very clear that you all are not communicating. You're not on the same page. Please tell me you, at least since you're married, have sought counseling. <laughs> it was a train wreck. What occurred during counseling? I wanted us to work on our conflict resolution skills. So we go in to tell our, our story. TJ shows up with a list of everything he doesn't like about me. Well, Mrs. And Joel, the one thing I can tell you is when you're going to counseling, each one of you does have the right to come into the counselor with what is bothering them. Sure. But at least you both came to the table with something to try and resolve. So what was your problem with his list? The length of it. Ooh. <laughs> It was, how, it was... How many things were on the list? Like, over 30. Over 30. Did you submit that? She didn't that? even look at the list. I, Wait a minute. I, Did you I submit it, it to the court? I'd like to see it. Okay. When I bring up something that bothers me, she doesn't seem to acknowledge my statement and assumes that I'm being bossy, stuck up, or argumentative. When I explain why I feel that way, she flips it and says that I am always right, righteous, and a bully. Disrespects my professionalism, business ethics and practice. Cuts into conversations with clients, phone calls, Zoom meetings. This is very specific. Th these are things that I made a list of things that affect me. And I, I even told Tresha this. This list is for me. Honestly, I have the full list here. It looks like you don't really like her. That's what I felt. Your Honor, I think that I love her but I don't like a lot of things she does. And it was evident from early on in our marriage, and that is why I left the, the house at four months. Did you know 
who Mrs. Joe was before you married her? Uh, I did to some degree, Your Honor. However, with the pandemic setting in, I think we spent too much time with each other and uh, more things came out as we approached our wedding and then as we got married, I felt like it was, I was getting tired. And, so, in and other it, words, you nested out of necessity and then when that necessity started to be lifted, you started to see that you were not as compatible as you thought. You could say that, Your Honor. I, I just did. <laughs> He took off his wedding ring and said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. And he grabbed his condoms and Viagra and his cat and left. Because that's all a man needs to get through today. <laughs> condoms, Viagra, and a cat. <laughs> Baby. I did bring my toothbrush, Your Honor. <laughs> no, I don't think you did. Yes, the you condoms, the Viagra, <laughs> and the and cat. Viagra and the cat. Baby, a man can he, launch he a missile to... with those three things. <laughs>so I said, sure, come on, you know, I, I like the dog, you know, it's no problem. But then I did ask him, I go, are you, are you going with a girl? Is this a date? No, 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 it's, it's, it's no date. In fact, he, he even went, oh, like, like, it was so preposterous to, to even ask him that question. When in truth, it was a date. He did go with a girl, you know? So he lied. He totally lied. Mr. Joel, did you lie? He made this huge story. Why'd you lie? Uh, uh, because I had to protect the, that woman from her. Because if I let her know about any woman that's close to me or getting close to me, she will feel Tressa's wrath. There's, there's she, I, she went on people, dating. She went on dating sites. Just one minute. I'm she, sorry. She Ms. went Joel. on dating sites and already was dating other men. So I decided to do the same thing. I'm going to go see if I can meet some nice people out there and see if I'm wrong. So, Mrs. Nice Joel, people. Mr. Joel is saying you all were effectively separated at that point. And obviously, he was not living there because he asked you to right. dog sit. We were, we were separated, but I thought we were still trying to work it out. Were you dating other people? I had been on some dates. That's there... called dating, <laughs> OK? If you've been on some dates, that's called dating. I... You can't accuse somebody of half-truths if you're not going to tell the I whole truth yourself. I wasn't sleeping with anybody. I didn't ask you if you were sleeping with somebody. But I said, were you dating someone else? Not regular. Um, did you all have any agreement as to what that looked like during the separation? You know, if you say, I'm taking a break, does that mean we can see other people? Does that mean that we can take other intimate partners? Did you all have a real conversation about what a separation means? We did no. not have a real conversation, Your Honor. No. I take and it that you all don't have a real conversation no, about very exactly. much. No, he didn't. We, I mean, after, after that whole thing with the, with the list, he asked me if I wanted to see it, and I said, no, I, I don't want to see this. Your feelings about me are, are not none of my business. If he has a list of the things he doesn't like, uh -huh. and you're not interested in seeing that list, then that means you're not really interested in making any changes that would accommodate him. I was interested. I was just so overwhelmed by that point, because after I didn't look at his list, he took off his wedding ring and said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. And he grabbed his condoms and Viagra and his cat and left. Because that's all a man needs to get through today. <laughs> condoms, <laughs> Viagra, and a cat. <laughs> Baby. I did bring my toothbrush, Your Honor. <laughs> no, oh, I don't think you did. You can always get the toothbrush at the drugstore, but the condoms, the Viagra, and the cat. Condoms, and Viagra, and the cat. Baby, a man can he, launch he a missile to... with those three things. <laughs> Let me be clear about that. You know, we've now talked about being unreliable. We've talked about anger issues. We've talked about lying. There's really only one thing left in a relationship, and I, I guess I might as well ask it. 
What happened to the intimacy in your relationship? We and a hush fell over Jerusalem. <laughs> There's nothing going on. Clearly. I wouldn't say that. We, we still have intimate... That's one thing we still have, is, is we've, we've always been good in the bedroom. I, I have a, uh, a unique attraction to Tresha Yonner that uh, uh, makes it hard for me to be around her without, you know, approaching her on an intimate level. She still floats your boat even after all of this. Yeah. Your Honor, she has... Uh, we both have these fantasies that we play out. And, and we find out when she talks about things that we do well together, one of those things is we have a lot of things in common in, that, in the bedroom. And one of those things that uh, I feel is that she uses that against me when she gets angry. And she uses these things. It's the same thing over and over and over. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Let's, 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 it's stale. Let's find something else. So in other words, there, without getting too far in your business, right. this, this is a family show, <laughs> um, there's some sexual talk, sexual fantasies that you all have used in your sex play in the past that you still enjoy and you're bored by. I'm bored by it, but it's just dirty and it feels degrading. Got it. And I think I deserve better. Got it. Is that all you got? Oh, Mr. Joel? That would be nice, Your Honor, if she wouldn't partake in that kind of activity herself. I like uh, to get freaky in the bedroom, but there's a line. Well, you know, Your Honor, the line is very thin <laughs> and, and it's all about her. And I agree with you that and oh my I agree God. with her. Oh no, my excuse God. me. I agree it's all with about you, you that you get say. All of the time. You get say. It's I never the TJ push show. you in any direction. 24-7. It's not true. You, you, you're honest, not true. I can tell you what is true. Mrs. Joel says that you have anger issues, and she's right. Um... She says that you're verbally abusive. I'm not happy with the way that either one of you talk to each other. You claim that you can't get her to really talk about your problems, and this is really one of the first times that you all have had open communications on some of these issues. But the one thing that I keep coming back to again and again and again is y'all shouldn't have got married. I'm sorry. I do not see compatibility other than an occasional freakazoid, which works for y'all. <laughs> Again, no judgment, have fun, go with God. But if that's all you got, that is not what a marriage is. You can't throw chairs or bang chairs or call her the B word when you get mad. You can't submit to him sexually just to let him get off and then get mad at him uh, the next time he wants to do that, that freaky thing. You can't take your ring off and toss it down and say the marriage is over and think that that's going to be okay. That's not a marriage, that's not a relationship. That's a tit for tat. That's no communication. That's a pain in my behind. And guess what I got? I got divorce papers. Which one of y'all want them? Because clearly, <laughs> somebody needs to get divorced. Robert, give this to these people, and I'm done. Thank you. You know, it's clear that there's sometimes a couple needs to be divorced, but with them, they never should've got married. I mean, talking about a list, I think the only list I ever got was get milk and eggs. And that's the only list that you need to get <laughs> as a husband. Um, the thought that he would make a list of 30 things that he clearly did not like about her. At the end of me reading the list, I said, he didn't like her at all. Well, let me see. Weren't they on a dating app or something, or no? Yeah, well, it clearly wasn't that dating app that requires you to put a list That's in. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I know that one. <laughs>